Good evening. It's so lovely to be with you again, isn't it, Ronnie? Oh, it is indeed, isn't it, Ronnie? Can I have my glasses back now? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, as you can tell, sadly, the two Ronnies are not in this film. But one of them is. So, it's Runaway Railway, a little forgotten gem from the 1960s. As a small branch railway is under threat of closure, a group of local kids rally together in a bid to save it. But little do they realise their efforts are being hijacked by Ronnie Barker and Sidney Taffler in a bid to rob the nearby mail train. Hilarity ensues as an epic train chase takes place in a bid for the kids to foil the robbers for good. So, storyline wise, what do we think? I found it quite charming, personally. I, I thought it was a bit all over the place. Somewhere. You bastard. <laughs> what? <Well, t> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's my opinion. You can't change it. Oh, I beg to differ. Well, in fairness, it's probably a little <laughs> bit on the generic side. I mean, a local railway under threat of closure. We've kind of seen that all before. Yeah. This was a film made for uh, Children's Film Foundation, so primarily mm -hmm. for kids. So I can understand that the main characters of this film are going to be children, to, mm. so they can relate to the audience. But it's, there's certain aspects of this film which I find somewhat irritating. Apart from so, the fact that John Pertwee is only in it for two minutes? Apart yeah. from the fact that John Pertwee is only in it for two minutes. <laughs> you don't even say that much. <laughs> no. He, he just kind of stands there most of the time and says like two lines and that's it. I it's found him like fairly... his first episode as the Doctor. Kind of, yes. I found just him been... all but forgettable in this film. Mm. If you, <clears throat> to, be, to be perfectly honest, if you didn't know it was John Pertwee, you'd be forgiven for not recognising him. Mm. I spent most of the film looking out for him. Yeah, because I looked up on IMDb afterwards. I was like, oh, John Pertwee's in this. Who is he? I looked up. He plays Station Master. I figured, oh, he's the Station Master of the station that the kids are at. I'd, I'd looked here and I like, hang on, that's not John Pertwee. Then realised at the end of the film, he's the Station Master of the station that they run to. Which... Paddington, isn't it? I think it is Paddington, mm. yes. Although some of the video in there will dispute that mm, but still mm, yes one of the main things i found wrong with this was the fact that um supposedly this is a british railways branch line going by the emblems on the hats and stuff yet they seem to be so understaffed that they need to use the children as unpaid labor i think they just enjoy child slavery personally well, this that's is a little harsh don't you think the kids just enjoyed themselves so much that they just wanted to get involved this but is true and get paid it's all do, well and do any volunteers on Heritage Railways get paid? No. It's no, all but they not enjoy doing it. Rail. Yes, but it's all well and good having children want to be involved in stuff. But the fact is that the the crew driving Matilda was one uh, driver on there. There should in theory be a fireman there as well, but there wasn't. And he was letting the kid drive the train. So you wouldn't be allowed to have that these days on several counts. Number one, the health and safety of a child driving the uh, train in the first place. And secondly, under child protection, you couldn't have just one adult left with them. It kind of shows as a sign of the times, really. Yeah, yeah. sad, really. It's sad because it's it has its charms, I suppose. Mm. I mean, Barker and Taffler are like enjoying themselves. Hmm. But so would you if you've got to ride on the footplate of a steam engine for a prolonged <laughs> period of time. Well, yeah. You just, wouldn't, you just wouldn't expect them to enjoy themselves in a film like that. Why though. not? What, what is there not to enjoy about it? Adam? Lots of things. <laughs> Such as? The things. Such as? The... Yes. Notes. Notes. Well, unhelpful. You have nothing. I have you nothing You have nothing here. on this. <laughs> As a result, your point is null and void. <laughs> so marks out of three for story? Uh, I gave it a one, but I'm prepared to go up to one and a half. Because? B one and a half. God. One and a half? I'm standing my ground here. Okay, fine. <laughs> on the fact that it's, on a, it's, it's a touch generic for me, the whole um, railway closing down, we've seen that all before type thing. Um, I would go for one and a half as well. It, it's got elements of... Um, it has elements of charm it's, within it's, it, but it's, it's also it's elements a, of... It's a kind of a cross between Titfield and The Great Train Robbery. 
Yeah. If you if you think about it, so it's they're trying to save the railway, but there's also the robbery thing going on at the same time. So it's like they've seen the two things and thought, oh, they were two really successful things. We'll put them together. Then we'll obviously have a successful thing. And then the St. Trinian's mob obviously looked in this and thought, hang on, we can use that chase scene in one of our films. Of course. <laughs> yes. See, I'm going to stick by it. I'm going to give it a full two. And my reasoning for this is thus. Titfield was a generic film for everyone. This is, as we've already have pointed out, a kid's film. And you've got to look at it through the eyes of kids. And from a kid's perspective, it is a bloody fantastic film. All right. All right. So what about technicals then? <laughs> what that... technicals? Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> as we all know, funding for kids' films and kids' television programmes was never great in no. those days, and that really does show through in this. Um, just, oh, no. Quite, I don't quite understand why they had to go through all the effort to put extra bits on an engine to make it look... Different, yeah. When those bits weren't even used, yes. Those they put, cylinders, they put some fake cylinders on, which didn't have any pistons going in or out of them, and and a chimney which looked like it came off of an Indian machine. Yes. Why? And why is there access to the main line by a ground frame, not run by a signal box? Because it's a military railway. I know it's a military <laughs> railway in real life. But However, the point still stands that a branch line joining the main line is not generally operated as such <laughs> by a ground frame. And why are you sounding like a British policeman when you were saying this? Because I am bloody pissed off with it. <laughs> it causes too many complications and it means that one of the poor buggers has got to stand off manning the ground frame for half the film because he can't stay on in case they derail. On the upside, at least they acknowledge the fact that if the points were set incorrectly, they might derail. Okay. Fine. Marks? On technical? One. one. Yeah, one. If it wasn't for one too many sped up film sequences where you could clearly see that some of the actors in the background were doing stuff, um, yeah, I'd say one as well. And the choice of cutaways, I mean, the, the, I, I know... I know what the joke was, but I felt the whole breakfast burning routine was the the, the choice in, in the edit phase to include that sequence was unnecessary. Yeah, it was sausages. <clears throat> it was sausages. Yes, I like sausages, but I don't like that sequence. Well, whatever it was, it was charred at the end. So, well, unidentified. At the end, unidentifiable. Mm -hmm. yes, it was it charred, good. and then it was squashed, yes. and. Even before then, it was completely <laughs> identifiable. So, <laughs> general appeal. Relatively it's, appealing. It, it's, I, it, as you say, it, it does appeal to the kids. It appeals to the railway enthusiast because it's probably one of the few films that actually gives a slightly more extensive look at Longmore. Mm. Yes, this is true. I think if you're a fan of Longmore, then this is a definite must for you. Mm. You, can, you can see what the advantages of Longmore having stayed open would have been. Yes. What? They could have used it in such a manner as this. Oh, right. I see what for you filming. I, I thought you were going to say they were going to hand it over to one of the kids. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> if the filming. Bit. That was it. brilliant, though. Can you imagine long more? Oh, God, yeah. Kids? I'd have done it. <laughs> yeah. So oh, appealing yeah. to the kids and appealing to the enthusiasts of long more, but there isn't much left for anybody else. Not it's really, no. Kind of, I mean... No, there isn't much that. Is it, is it, as I say, we've kind of seen it before with the case of Titfield, Great Train Robbery. They mm. have done it better. People who like PMVs. <laughs> so general enthusiasts, basically. Yes. Or wagon enthusiasts. Yeah. So I think on that basis, I'm probably going to give it a two. Yes. On general I, I'd appeal. agree with you on a two. Yeah. I, mm, yeah, two. I, I, I very nearly gave it two and a quarter, but now two. I'll, I'll, I'll... Oh God, we're going into quarters now. Okay. First halves, now quarters. What are we doing? We're going into thirds next. Jesus. <laughs> so, <laughs> recommend yay or nay? Um, I'd say both. Depends who you're talking to. Yeah. yeah. I'd recommend it to a group of kids to watch. Yeah. 
I'd recommend it to kids or lawnmower enthusiasts, <coughs> but to anybody else... I'd recommend it to general steam enthusiasts as well, just because it's... It, it's one of those films you've got to see once. Yeah. It's not one that I'd say you have to watch over and over again, but it's def- I think it's a film you ought to see at least once in your mm. life. I think if you're curious more than anything, then it's worth checking out. Yes. Mm. It is on YouTube. Somewhere. In bits. Yeah. See the link. So go watch it. Mm. And see for yourself. 